conversation as genre, so I'm really happy that CCA has made this up as a format for us. Uh, I always wanted to be a talk show host, um, and I also have with you, in fact, had many fantastic conversations where I've kind of wished there were a recorder or a fly on the wall or something, because we are coming up with some really interesting ideas. Um, I love talking to artists. They really feed my thinking, and um, Tammy Ray is one of those people whose work has inspired mine. Um, in the book I have coming out, there are other artists who've been my fellow travelers, and so that's uh, one reason why I um, am interested in the conversation is one way that those collaborations happen. Uh, and I just wanted to say that up front because in addition to talking about some interesting ideas, I think the fact that we're coming up with stuff this way will be interesting. I'm excited to see what happens. Do you want to say anything about that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, can you guys hear me? No. Yeah. No. 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 Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we got to get our, our sound good. This is the balloon ship. <laughs> Okay. Is that yeah. okay? All right. Um, yeah, I guess I, I think it's been made clear that it's not a conventional um, artist talk, and so sometimes we'll go through my work, and um, it might be kind of cursory. And if people have questions or need clarification in the end, you can ask questions. I'm not going to like give dimensions and you know material. So I'm not going to go into that kind of stuff. Just so you know. Um, yeah, but we were going to talk about how we met. I thought it would be really, we thought it would be really good just to sort of give a, a brief history of how we met each other and um, do you want to say anything about that or do you want me to? You start. I you remember. remember. <laughs> so we met, it was 17 years ago, I think we figured out. We met 17 years ago in Portland, Oregon um, through girlfriends, um, pretty much. Um, and so when I first met Anne, I, I had just finished graduate school and I had then gone to New York and I had done the Whitney program, which is this fellowship program, and I was about to be deployed, which is the way I think about it, to my first teaching job in the middle of nowhere in Indiana. And I was spending a summer in Portland with my girlfriend at the time. And you were traveling in the Northwest with... With my girlfriend. Yeah. Still my girlfriend. Yep. Uh, and I, 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 partly we want to theorize gossip as, uh, yeah. or these kind of backstories as important to the way work gets done. <laughs> and as will come up in our discussion, I think both of us have connections to music worlds mm -hmm. um, without necessarily having been in bands. And I was for a minute. That's right, you were, yeah. There's one recording. And I've been a go-go dancer, so I have to yeah. do this <laughs> that way. But, uh, there, the bands and the music world is one way that people yeah. need, socialize, perform, etc. And academic and writing worlds and visual art worlds mm -hmm. overlap and collaborate with those. And I, I have an interest in which art forms seem to be make the best friendships, but don't make me pick. They all have their value. And I'm happy that music world brought us together mm -hmm. and then allowed us to have conversations. Yeah. The other connection I would say is not just um, Portland, although that location is important because one of the things we might also want to talk about is where art gets made and uh, the importance of the Pacific Northwest and Olympia, for example, to some of the work that you have done. Uh, I live in Austin, which is a big music town, and being able to be there has been important. And we have also had many good conversations at the Michigan Women's Music Festival, um, which brings connects me to some people in the audience even. Uh, but thinking about that as a cultural space that nurtures connections between people or allows us to see each other even when we don't live in the same town 
is I think important also to understanding how conversations happen and then how work gets made out of those conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, should we go on? Do you want to say anything else about that? I think that's good. Yeah. Good little setup. Yeah. Um, and we could maybe segue into the archive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to start with um, a project of Tammy Ray's from 2008, I think, mm -hmm. uh, called An Archive of Feelings. And I wrote a book called An Archive of Feelings. I stole the title. <laughs> I totally stole it. I actually asked for people who want to do such things. So Anne wrote this book called An Archive of Feelings, and it, it was a really important book to me. Um, I read it, I've read it several times. Um, and there was so much in that book that kind of resonated with me and we can start, we can talk about that. But um, when I started making this body of work, which this image right here that we're starting with comes from, um, I kept doing this writing and I kept using the phrase an archive of feelings when I was trying to sort of describe what I was working on and what I was documenting or making. And um, I eventually I just asked Anne if I could steal her title. And she and said, I was yes. thrilled to be yeah. stolen from in yes. that way. <laughs> um, but it's something I do a lot is that I borrow titles from already existing cultural things like songs and movies <laughs> and characters. And um, not exclusively, but it is something that I do quite frequently. Um, and, and I'll just say, a, should I just say a couple of things about this body of work? So this is from 2008. It, it um, was a departure from what I had been working on up until that point, at least for the 10-year period up until making it, um, in which I literally, I guess I should say, like, because this is relative, is that I, I, it was the first work, real work I made after having a, a child. So I, I gave birth in 2006, and it was the first time I actually made real work again. And um, it came out of this very, um, claustrophobic time in my life when I was stuck at home with a child. I mean, to be totally frank, and um, uh, I, I'm just gonna go through a few things. I was looking at objects a lot and just sort of thinking about my own personal archive. So the archive is something I've visited in my work a lot. I've um, appropriated uh, personal belongings of other people and created kind of biographies and sort of false narratives and what have you. Um, I've restaged um, and invented characters and narratives. I've constantly worked with the sort of fabrication. But I started looking at, I, I guess that first image I should just say is called My Inheritance and it's literally every single thing I took from my mom's apartment when she passed away, which was like a half a paper bag full of things. Um, and then this one is every cassette tape that was made for me by a boyfriend or girlfriend or a very close friend at the beginning of a friendship. So I've, I've kept every cassette tape. So I have like two boxes of these and then I went through and I curated ones that um, were significant to a specific relationship and then photographed them individually and created this tile thing. Um, and what's sort of interesting is that I, in thinking about your book, Anne, is that I, um, your book has a lot to do with sort of performance and activism, and this work is actually very quite clinical, and these objects are devoid of their attachment to a particular person or a life, um, which your book is kind of the opposite of that in a way. Um, but I'll just sort of go through. Um, so everything, if you haven't seen this work in person, every object is photographed. So like in this last one, every object is life size in the final print so that when you're looking at the print, the apron is the size that it is in the real life. The glasses are the size. The, the crossword puzzle book is the size. Same thing with the cassette tapes. So the, the size of the original object determines the size of the print. This is love letters, which is a, literally just a, a box of love letters. Um, um, but it, it, I mean, I'll say one more, a couple more thing, and then I would love for you to talk about like the idea of melancholia. And something that struck me in your book is that you were really looking at kind of a 
the historical narrative of queer trauma, or to, to be queer is to be pathological, or to have uh, trauma or melancholia or mourning around queerness was pathologicalized. And I think what you were trying to do was kind of unearth that and actually look at kind of sites of trauma and grief and mourning as a radical space to live in with 